Hey, how's it going? It's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number 13 of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. Um, today I thought we'd go over just a quick thing about the uh, sample player. And for all the past videos, we've mainly dealt with really long samples, uh, like one-shot drum hits and stuff like that. But most of the time it's been pretty long samples because I don't know about you guys, but for me, this is the first time we've been able to load in high fidelity audio that's more than like one second into a Eurorack processor and have fun with it. I mean, you know, the fact that you can load almost 450 megs of sound is amazing. But uh, let's take a step back and uh, let's think of really, really short samples. So just to show you, I'm going to go into my sample pool. I've sort of pre-prepped this in advance. I've recorded four um, sounds into my computer from my Moog Mother 32. And I basically just held a note, recorded it for a few seconds. And then I went in after the fact and did edits so they'd loop perfectly. So with this in mind, if we go to a sample player, and then if we assign a sample, and I'll just pick one of these. Initially when it cycles, you hear a bit of a blip. And that's because by default there's a little bit of a crossfade. Usually it's two milliseconds. However, if I turn this uh, sample player's fade to zero, we have a perfectly cycling waveform. And with that in mind, we can adjust the speed of it. You know, if we take a look at what's happening, oops. <laughs> Sounds like the motor and excite bike. Um, however, if we take our speed of this sample player and assign it an external voltage source, such as the keyboard on my uh, KB37. Let's see what we have. So now we have perfectly tracked pitch controlling our sample player. And we're using a waveform from a completely different synthesizer. And it might be blasphemous that I'm using the Moog, but I thought it would be a fun test anyway. Um, so let me remove this. And just to show you, earlier on, I uh, I created a custom unit and I added a delay after, after the unit. But if we open up this custom unit, uh, I have, remember we talked about, I think a few videos back about the custom control. So I have one for gate, I have a volt per octave, and I have a few CV controls, ones to control uh, VCA for uh, a sine wave, which turns into an LFO. And the other one, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but the if you can remember, the locals within a, the local controls within a custom control, or within a custom unit, allow you to uh, pipe a whole bunch of parameters all within various units within the custom unit. So it's almost like a macro. So with that in mind, I have the, that master pitch CV coming from my keyboard going to oscillator one, oscillator two, um, the uh, my vibrato control, which is a custom control, is within each oscillator. If I open it up, if I go to pitch control of the sample player, uh, oh, it's I have it in the, the first oscillator, sorry, because I didn't want them to both be vibrato. If I go to the pitch, and you can see here, there's my sine wave, it's running at almost nine hertz. A little bit fast for natural vibrato, but it's more of an effect. And then after that, I have a VCA, and the VCA is controlled by my custom control voltage too. So what that means in the end is if I play this, if I, if I adjust my mod wheel, And again, the pitch is just derived from the uh, 
the sample player speeding back, speeding up and slowing down really quickly. And it track it tracks perfectly with Portamento. Uh, if I add it internally with the envelope follower, or if I use the built-in glide functionality on this KB37. Like I'm gonna set it to the maximum and listen to how smooth this is. And again, that's just the sample player speeding up and slowing down. So if we if we look at it, uh, let's go here. You can sort of see it going crazy. <laughs> Anyway, just to show you, and I've set another parameter to adjust some delay. Oh, let me turn down my glide. <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of a Pink Floyd kind of sound. And there's no glitches, even if I add a really fast arpeggiator, it tracks perfectly. So if I add, let me just engage the arpeggiator. So that's jumping across two octaves and I can speed this up like crazy. And again, keep in mind, this is the sample player speeding up and slowing down like crazy. And I can introduce a little bit of portament portamento if I wanted to. And it's still taking it. It's totally fine. So that's very cool. And I have my pitch wheel actually adjusting the release time. Shorting it down. I can still introduce my vibrato. And this whole time, if we switch the mode to scope and set the this switch to admin, our CPU load is only 32%. And it doesn't matter if I speed this up, It doesn't affect the overall load. Like the the ER301 is stable and happy where it's at. So there you go. Uh, just an example of taking some really short waveforms and then using them as an oscillator source in a synth in the 301. So uh, hopefully that spawns some ideas and uh, have fun. Okay, cheers, bye.